In April 2019, the parents of AJ Frond, Andrew Frond, and Joanne Cunningham had called 911 to report that AJ was missing. The father sounded calm as he explained to the operator that he just got home and couldn't find his son. He further explained that he had checked the entire house, including the basement and the street in which they had lived, all to no avail. Immediately, police officers were dispatched to the scene. But what initially started as a search for a five-year-old boy would soon quickly turn into a murder case. How did it happen so fast? That's what we're here to find out. AJ Frond was described as a happy child, one that everyone wanted to be around. He was young and full of life and very brilliant for his age, as his mother pointed out. But despite the charm that little AJ possessed, his family had verbally and physically abused him and denied him the care that he deserved. Since 2012, Joanne, his mother, had been under the radar of the Illinois Department of Children and Family Services, all thanks to her drug use and child neglect. However, she was finally granted custody of AJ in 2015, after Joanne and Andrew had complied with drug treatment services, a factor that made them eligible to be parents. In February 2016, Joanne and Andrew were finally given legal custody making them AJ's parents once again. The drug use between the parents would subside to the minimum for the next few years, and there would be no reports of drug use at home until 2018. In 2018, the DCS will be contacted by an anonymous caller to report drug use in the home. The caller stated that Andrew and Joanne were housing a heroin addict, but unfortunately, there was no investigation done to verify this claim. The same year, a social worker would discover that AJ was suffering abuse in his own home, his arms slightly bruised and his face containing a number of odd scars. At the same time, authorities had found Joanne passed out in a car and it was clear that she had relapsed on drugs. It is important to note that AJ had a younger sibling who lived in the same house with their parents. After an interview with Joanne, the investigators would admit that there were no signs of maltreatment and that the boys were doing just fine. But it would become impossible to deny episodes of abuse in December 2018 when a police officer found a large bruise on AJ's hip. While this was clearly an episode of maltreatment, Joanne managed to convince the authorities that AJ had been injured by the dog, a lie that the boy would also corroborate with mostly out of fear. Later, AJ would tell a doctor, maybe someone hit me with a belt, maybe mommy didn't mean to hurt me. However, both kids were released back to the family based on the fact that the father, Andrew, would be more present at home. Unfortunately, things eventually got out of hand. That lands us back in April 2019, when Andrew picked up his phone to inform the police that he couldn't find his son. Immediately, a search began for little AJ. Where could he have gone? Did the he run away from home or did someone kidnap AJ right in his own home? Andrew said that the last time he saw AJ was around 9 p.m., which was just around his bedtime. Due to the seriousness and the urgency of the situation, the FBI were called in to assist. To be able to understand the motive behind the disappearance of AJ, the police decided to begin their search with the family home in Crystal Lake. The home was unfit for living as it had garbage everywhere and some of the floors had been ripped up. Fortunately, AJ's little brother wasn't being neglected or abused at the time of the investigation. But AJ's disappearance remained a mystery. Where had the little boy gone? Was AJ in trouble? Had he escaped the home due to the abuse that he suffered? Or perhaps the worst fear? Was he dead? Three days after the call that involved the police, their worst fear was confirmed. AJ's body was discovered in a shallow grave wrapped in plastic with straws of hay placed over his body. Investigators found the body of AJ at Woodstock, Illinois, which was around 10 miles away from the family's home. The parents were arrested and immediately charged to court for the murder of their own son, AJ Frond. It is with heavy heart that the Crystal Lake Police Department reports that we've located what we believe to be the body of Andrew A.J. Friend. Investigators located what they believe to be A.J.'s body buried in a shallow grave wrapped in plastic in a rote area of Woodstock, Illinois. According to the investigators that were assigned to the case, all hell let loose on the night of April 15th when AJ had soiled his clothes in bed. 
This had infuriated his mother who decided to punish him in her own way. As punishment, she forced him awake and made him take a cold shower. Remember, it was midnight and it was also freezing cold. But this wasn't all. Joanne repeatedly beat him as he took his bath and shouting at him. Later in the court, Andrew would confess saying that Joanne hit AJ's head with a shower head, a blow that led to the young boy losing his life. This is because the autopsy of AJ's body would reveal that he suffered multiple injuries to his head and torso, and these injuries were so bad that they caused his brain to swell. The autopsy also revealed that the blood of AJ had aspirated into his lungs, making him unable to breathe. Unfortunately, all of these beatings happened while the child was placed under a freezing shower, shivering to his death. Andrew wanted to minimize his involvement in the murder, but he wasn't as smart as the investigators. On the night that AJ died, investigation showed that Joanne had used Andrew's phone to search for how to conduct CPR on a child. Later on, a gruesome video will be discovered on Andrew's phone. Little AJ appears in the video with bruises all over his body. Despite his pleas, Joanne repeatedly hits him for wetting himself. In another recording, AJ can be heard saying that he no longer wants to be a part of the family, but his mother wouldn't hear it. Where he would go, she quizzed. She even tells him that his father will pick her and his little brother over him, a statement which definitely crushed little AJ. Later in the same recording, Joanne would ask AJ why he wants bad people to hurt her. Candid and honest, AJ responded in his innocent, childish voice, so I don't ever see you again. The video was discovered when Andrew signed a consent form that allowed the police officer to check his phone. Interestingly, his phone also contained text messages between Andrew and Joanne, and in one of them there was a shopping list which included gloves, a duct tape, and air freshener. As regards to the video that was shared with the court, the court documents read, AJ is seen to be naked except for some small bandages around both wrists encircling his hips. AJ is seen to be holding an ice pack to his face and when he removes it, he is seen to have deep red bruising around his eyes. AJ's father had tried to downplay his involvement in the murder of his own son, but later in the trial it was discovered that rather than call the authorities after AJ became unconscious, Andrew had stashed the body of the five-year-old and placed it in the basement. Then, when the stench from AJ's body could no longer be hidden, he put the body in his truck and buried it in the empty lot in a shallow grave. Till the day of his death, AJ lived in constant pain and neglect. When the police visited the family's home for the investigative reasons, they reported that the house reeked of feces, urine, and unpacked dirt. His father wasn't any different from Joanne. He had repeatedly tried to deny his direct involvement in the murder of AJ, but the evidence leveled against him could not be denied. He was just as evil and neglectful towards AJ. In fact, the decision to put the five-year-old under a running shower was the idea of none other than Andrew, who was opposed to Joanne's more violent form of punishment. In court, Andrew would later plead guilty to the charges of involuntary manslaughter and concealment of homicidal death. After prosecutors agreed to drop the first-degree murder charges, Andrew was sentenced to 30 years in prison and would become eligible for parole only after 19 years. AJ's mother, Joanne Cunningham, also pleaded guilty to first-degree murder and was sentenced to 35 years in prison. After her sentencing, Joanne's motherly side finally came to the fore. I had the privilege of having AJ as a son. When I had him, it was one of the happiest days of my life. I love him. I miss him. There's nothing I wouldn't do to bring him back. My children are the greatest gifts God could have ever given me. They're my whole world. They're the reason I breathe. Anyone who truly knows me can say how much I love being a mother more than anything in the world. Being a mother defines me. <sighs> In her closing remarks, she told the entire court that she would give her life to have AJ come back to life. But the reality is dark, sad, and cannot be changed. No matter how great her pain is, she would forever live with the conviction that she murdered her own child, beautiful five-year-old AJ. The greatest tragedy is thinking of all the things that AJ could have turned out to be, and all the beautiful things that he would never do. 
May his young and peaceful soul find rest. Thanks for watching Beyond Crime. If you enjoyed this episode and want to support more true crime content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment to let us know what you think of this case.